Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, family, ghouls, and other creatures of the night. My name is Rina, the storyteller, and I welcome you all to Red Center by Night. This is the second Inquisition point of view of the story, and again, a warning that those supernatural creatures like vampires are romanticized. It doesn't change the fact that they are the undead. They are no longer living and no longer able to enjoy the same lifestyle they used to have as a mortal. The Second Inquisition storyline is here to be able to let you view the way a normal human sees these creatures. We see a young woman inside her room that looked to be full of character. It has band posters on the wall and a study nook on one side. This young woman looked to be in her late teens. Pale, freckled face. Eyes the color of emerald and hair the color of cotton candy. We see her frowning in front of a full-size mirror, turning her head left and right. Her reflection doing the same with one difference. Her hair in the mirror is red instead of pink. She raised a hand and her reflection did the same. She waved her hand around and so did her mirror self. She rolled her eyes before turning away to grab her coat and her mirror self smiled before turning away and grabbing her own coat. Ilona thought to herself, let's just, let, let's just get this over with. Now, shall we begin our story? In the previous episode, Arcel had begun a formal meeting that happens every night for the Ark. In this meeting, Mr. Walker revealed some information regarding Ilona Winters, a PSYOPs trainee who went missing a few months ago with others. This information piqued the interest of the cell but not as much as the information regarding a certain event and how to get in. Professor Tristan and Mr. Locke ended up meeting with a fae named Trixie while Dr. Yu and Tanya went and scouted a specific location within the CBD proper. During the meeting with Trixie, they managed to negotiate 10 questions answered in exchange for a red Mustang. Afterwards, the cell had finally received the invitation and managed to get into the event proper before they closed down the entry for all participants. The agents then decided to simply get the keys to their lodging before heading to where the cast members are usually located. After a few harrowing minutes of them scouting around, they had arrived to the specific cast member that they were looking for. One cast member named Aaron Fang. We left off our session last time with a teary-eyed reunion and a sense of hostility towards Dr. Yue. Currently in this room, in this dark room, Aaron is still staring at Dr. Yue. Well, it seems like you have something more you want to say to me. I... I just... I want to know if you're on our side and well, not just following what your group wants to do. Have you... Would you consider yourself on Mr. Locke's side? Yes. Do you know what they went through to get here into this very tent to help you escape? A fate that you are really responsible for yourself? It's not important. What did you do? 
Gus? Don't worry about it. So would you say that you are acting out of their interest or your own? How can you I didn't prove ask to, to be saved that you I are didn't trustworthy? ask to be saved if that's what you're asking. And I didn't ask to come on this mission to save you, but here I am. Dr. UA can be trusted. UA's good people, we can vouch. Hi, we haven't met. Um, <laughs> sorry. Hi. <sighs> sorry. Hi. I'm I'm Erin. Hi, Erin. I'm Tanya. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Have I met? Like, have I? I haven't. Well, I haven't seen Erin here. But... Hello. I um, also work with. Lock at the Inquisition. Uh, call me the Professor. The Professor. Mm. And as you stare down at Erin, she looks exactly like the one who handed you, maybe a lifetime ago, the one who handed to knock on that van and handed you a letter. Mm. There's no, like, there's no look of recollection in her face, like... No. No, how right, cool. Just checking if I need to insight this. <laughs> she seems sus. I mean, you can insight yes, it. Yes, please. If you like. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what? Insight. What's an insight? Cool, cool, cool. Two successes. It's you can't tell. I not my glasses on, on properly. <laughs> the professor. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a good title. You've got to stop giving people names in this place. <laughs> I mean, she's, I don't want to give Locke's friend a like, fake name. That's... Cat hugger? What? Yeah, we, we heard about this. Can you go into a bit more detail about this cat that you needed to hug? Yeah, um... So I was taken... Where from? I was taking in the casino. Um, Saw your work in the kitchen. Yeah, that's a uh, last resort. It's not, we can work on it. You'll teach me explosives? If you want to. No. No. Can we focus here? Yeah, sorry. Oh. Um, yeah, so the cat is actually, she like turns around and like removes, uh, goes to her bed and removes the the blanket to reveal a tiny um, orange tabby with black stripes on it. So it looks like a tiny tiger. And she grabs it and then she just <laughs> holds it like a baby and then shows it around to you all. Like So this is the cat that's part of the show and... Part of the deal I made with, um, I can't say, um, with him, him. And he seems to be struggling to say so it. You can't say it? Can you write it down? Can't. If I write, if I say the letters of the alphabet, can you tell me to stop with the letter that it starts with? I A, B, blink twice. <laughs> C, D, E. I, I, she's changing twice a ton. I don't, she's just blinking normally and kind of fast. It's hard to tell. Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you to Mr. But I was being stalked, uh, by, by an old stalker of mine. And I, I saw someone, I, I saw, the hints that he might be around. Mm -hmm. And so I had to blow up that room just in case he was there, just to give me a head start. The kitchen? Yes. Okay. We were told that this cat isn't actually a cat, that it's more than a, is it now, is it just a cat? It is just a cat. Just, okay. But You're hugging it now, so... Yeah, uh, so is that successful? Have you successfully no, hugged the cat? No, the, the deal had changed because I failed that 
promise. So what's the current deal as it stands? I, I have to do a stand-in. Okay. What does that mean? I, I have to be a game master for the next, a game leader for the next event. Oh, because okay. some, some, there's this group in the casino that annoyed, um, annoyed mister. Mm -hmm. No, we're aware, aware of them. Uh, yeah, so he got annoyed and he doesn't want to deal with any more what he calls leeches. You said you were taken from the casino. Where in the casino were you taken from? I was, I just remember running towards one of the side exits and then it was locked and there was somebody who was trying to help me get out and she, she told me to run the tried to find a different exit and I tried to do that however as I was running back to the main event hall everything just went dark who was the the person that was trying to help you um I don't know their name Can you describe them um tall uh, extremely stunning blonde um I mean they they have they they wear like a uh, red Mostly outfit. I'm uh, really bad at descriptions. I'm so sorry. Everything went dark at the, as you were inside the main casino. Yes, as I was running back. So, but we have security footage of you running into one of the storage containers. She was running past the storeroom and was nabbed from inside that. Oh, okay, it was the storeroom. I thought it was a storage container. My bad. Makes sense then. I thought she was lying. <laughs> so, like, sauce. <laughs> Big sauce. No, every, everything she's been saying has been checking out. Cool, cool. My bad. My map is very poorly drawn. <laughs> so the cat thing was part of how you became a cast member? Yeah, in, in a way. It was the only way to... I, I guess I was lucky. I, I can't really say. Uh, when I woke up the after d I, it went dark uh, I was in a cage and I was sort of lucky because mister was doing some dealings at that time and he offered the deal if you want to get out of there and away from my stalker just hug the cat that's simple during the show hug the cat what stopped you from hugging the cat? You said it went wrong. The, 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 there's like this, um, Delilah's friends from the casino. I just Delilah. met them. Yeah, Delilah Jones. So she's here? I don't know. I w the last time I saw her, she was in the casino with me because we went there to party and celebrate. But then her friends showed up during the show and interrupted it and stopped me from hugging a cat. I don't know. They keep saying it's dangerous. It's a cat. Did it look like the lion at the time? No, it's a cat. Was there a lion that you saw? No, it's a cat. What's the cat doing while we're having this conversation? <laughs> it's just... Lounging. Yeah. In it, office. It's not doing what cats do. Yeah, it's, yeah. But it's not being a sus. It's not like staring at us or anything like that. No. Mm. Would you like to hug the cat? The cat? No, I'm all good, thank you. Okay. I'll give the cat a scratch on the head though. Yeah, <laughs> it just purrs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it likes. It loves humans. So. Does it? Yeah. I'm sure it does. If. If we were wanting to m become cast members, we were told we could make a deal with a current cast member. Yeah. So could we make a deal with you? You're a yeah. current cast member, right? Yeah, but I'm a temporary one, so I'm not sure. Maybe. Mm. Is that the loophole? Wouldn't hurt to try, right? I mean... Mm. But what are your obligations as a cast member? Can you unemploy yourself at any moment? Mm -mm. Can you quit? I can't. I have to finish my task, and once I finish my task and fulfill it, then I am free of 
any obligation. And the person who decides your task is the person, is this Mr. Is this the guy who's running this place? What We found out their name, yeah, it was Kel? Kel? Yeah? I wrote it down. Yeah, it's written somewhere. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I think it w- I would love to be introduced to this Mr. Yeah, Kel. Say, yeah, it's Kel. K-E-L. When you say Mr., do you mean Mr. as in the Mr. Locke sense of Mr., or is this a... Okay, I don't mean worry. Mr. Locke sense of... Uh, That's fine. It's a, it's a it's honorary a title for some agents. Right. It's fine. Agent designation. Oh. It stood for military resource, and then people started abbreviating, and people are stupid. <laughs> I mean, it is MR. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. <laughs> no, it, it's just confusing sometimes. You're in charge. You well, can you change were, it if you no, want. I, I, you can change the rules. You can't change general perception. I had you listed as TR, as technical resource, and no one's calling you Tur. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd hate that. Mm. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to meet this, mister. But also you said their group as well. Like, well, there's, like, Dr. Yue's definitely been forthcoming with that Quajian communication, and for a general consensus, there's an alignment of interest. But, you know, of course, there's always not. Are there other individuals that you've encountered recently? Yeah, um, not as recent, well... What sort of time frame? I, like I said, I, 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 I grew up uh, in a family that generally hunts down Quajins because all of them, when they breathe their second life or reanimate they most likely are seeking vengeance it's like an evil spirit so yeah it's a bit of a narrow point of view there's some that's definitely some of them though yeah i haven't seeking vengeance evil to you sometimes whole towns are raised then that's not seeking vengeance is it and you're friends with Kindred. They're like monster monsters. <laughs> like Yeah, are you aware that um these blank bodies also raised towns? Kindred uh, with like, blank bodies. These kindred also sometimes hurt innocent people? Vampires. Oh I have not seen them kill. They definitely do seen enough people come back in body bags to definitely <laughs> confirm they kill people. But um I, I can believe that. What yeah, when these Quajin, when did you meet them? I was younger. Has it have you seen one recently? Uh I think five years ago. Okay, that's mm. fine. I haven't seen one around Australia. Do you yes. usually have the sense of it's like different but if there's a sudden plague in one city there's usually one it might surprise you but that there's just as varied quajin as there are kindred like one of the main pillars of dr yue's own kindred quajin group i guess you could call it is the protection of their family UA is good people. I'm sorry, Dr. UA. Well, things have <laughs> taken an unexpected but positive turn. Apology accepted. I grew up in a very narrow minded um, group of people. One can say they're like a cult in a way. Was, did they have a name? Was there a name for this? Like most cults have titles. Yes. Can but I ask what it was. It's Temper. Temper. That's it. Temper. I, don't have know. I, heard, I haven't heard of that at all in Inquisition records or anything, have I? No. Damn, you're real underground. 
It's usually just family members, so I keep it in the family kind of vibes. In a way, stronger than family. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd be very interested to meet this Mister and Mm, see what they want. Yeah, explore a bit more. Could we try making a deal and see if, as a temporary cast member, you can grant us cast member status? I don't know about you guys, but I am feeling real twitchy about the fact I have none of my weapons here. Yeah, it's um, nice. So I would really like some sort of advantage because I'm nervous. Mm. Mm. Does the cat have a name? The cat? Uh, not really. I don't know. I just call it cat. Cat. Yeah, does it respond to cat? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm happy to go and meet this mister. Mm, we can also stop along the way to see if there are places we can stock up for Tanya. Yeah, I just figure that if anyone's going to not give us a horrible task, task mm. it might be somebody who we already know. And also, Baron. Yes. The second that you successfully complete your task, do you no longer become? Are you no longer a cast member? Yes. Can you complete your task but still hold on to the status until you wish to let it go? No. Hmm. Okay, that might be a problem. Yeah, we'll have to negotiate something. Mm-hmm. But it's okay. It's, we can figure it out. Okay. Yeah. Well, like, what we just make like a, a non-consequential deal, like. I make a deal with you that you can give me customer status and I will give you... Oh, no, we'll have to perform, I think. We'll have to, we'll have to work. Why? Because that's... That's not necessarily... But if, if Aaron decides what the deal is, it doesn't necessarily, like... I don't think it's... Well, Aaron, from what the sounds of it, Aaron didn't designate herself cast. So the person that designated Aaron task is going to be the one to pass it. Is that correct? Like, you can't give it to us? They need to? I, I think so. I, I'm not really sure because you can find loopholes that's what i know mm. well what's the harm in trying yeah we'll offer you protection as cast members oh, okay yeah i mean that's also a cast member like security right yeah mm. do security get weapons I, i'm not sure it makes sense that they would okay do we have a deal yeah we have a deal this group will be Temporary cast member in exchange for protecting me, Aaron Fang, for the duration of the event. Well, until we don't know how long this event's going to go for. Until we for this three-day event. Or even then, I think we let's with the option to extend until we meet this Mister individual, and then we can find out the real scenario here because time moves differently here. The last thing we want to do this event could be three days for us and it could we could go outside and like we're in full star trek <laughs> ideally i mean it's much more likely that the world's gone supernova but optimism seems to be a good thing you're telling me that we finished the event and the world has ended no uh, it's, it's all sorts of possibilities that's loopholes as you said let's just make sure we're covering our bases okay professor <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you getting stuck here forever. Uh, yeah, I'd like rather not. I yeah. no access There's to explosives no and no gun. This is my nightmare. Mm. Are you okay with this then? Of course. I'd protect you anyway. Oh, you're so cool. <laughs> so what is the duration that we are going to settle on? I'm happy for, um, you know, I'm, or, uh, yeah, I don't run everything for everybody here now, so like everyone's for the three-day event or until we call it quits. I, I'm going to say until we meet the Mister for me and with option to extend. But I'm happy if you all to negotiate. You can all do what you want to here. We're not. I, my jurisdiction doesn't run into wherever we are here, this dimension. So you're all free to do what you wish to. How about I offer you protection until. I decide not to. (laughs) (laughs) 
Is that yeah. is that really a deal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to become a cast member until she, until I, she quits. I, I don't think yeah. you can put that as a, like a Facebook <laughs> relationship status. <laughs> it's when, complicated. Yeah, we're dating till I don't want to. <laughs> Isn't that every relationship? <laughs> yeah, I mean it is, but you don't have it there being like I won't tell you. Like you have to tell them you don't want to protect them anymore. You can't. Yeah, say, that's when yeah, she quits. Of course, that's when I quit. Yeah, like preemptive. Like oh, she got shot. Yeah, well I must have decided not to protect her, and I didn't. <laughs> I didn't realize that. This is getting llamas with hats. <laughs> <laughs> also, I think we should determine what constitutes as protection. What if I, like, what if we try our collective best, but something still happens to you? What happens when we fail the contract? Then it means that you have to make a new contract. Mm. We'll do our best to protect you for the duration of the yeah. event. We'll do what we can. Let's uh, let's go meet this Mister. I think. Do we have to shake on this, or do we have to like sign a contract in blood? I'm like, I feel like we're. I don't think. I think that's more infernal than fake. Okay. Yeah, it, it's more of just shaking hands with Mister anyway. Oh, we have to shake with him. Uh, I'm not sure if I can make deals because I'm just temporary cast. That's right. Let's try. It's just like shaking. Do you feel any different? I don't know. Okay. Let's go meet the mister. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, we try. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, yeah, you should be just five tenths down. Is there anything in Erin's room that looks like it would be a good resource for me to just take with me and for making things? You can roll intelligence and investigation and see if you can <sighs> gather. <laughs> the single lit candle suggests some sort Yeah, is there any matches or a lighter or anything around? Uh, you can look around. Yeah, all right. Let me can we all look roll. around? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've. This is not Elgin's something that I'm good at. Investigation or awareness, if you. That's higher. Uh, yeah. Okay. Two successes. Actually, I might spend a willpower to reroll. Is it. You can reroll up to three. Okay. Then, yeah, I will roll it up three. Okay, so four successes. Three for me. Three successes. One. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see shit. <laughs> Mr. Locke is busy. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Locke is busy staring being at like Amazon. staring at Aaron. He's somewhat distracted. <laughs> um, with three and four successes, you would find uh, things that you would need. Let's say bleach. However, there is no matches or anything to light the thing. Um, Aaron. If you ask Arian how did she light the the candles, um, there's always a she would tell you that there's always a ghost attendant that comes by and lights it for her. Okay. But there was bleach. Is there anything else? Just the bleach. All right, I'm taking that bleach with me. I think it's very important to take the bleach. We're taking that bleach to keep your hair ongoing for your personal. <laughs> this is not a weapon. Until we find out we are officially staff, we do not have any weapons. It's, it's a cleaning product. Exactly. It's fine. Can I see your name tag? Yeah. And she she removes her name tag that's just there. And it's made of what seems to be heavy metal. And uh. it's engraved Aryan Fang. Ah. Uh, so what sort of metal does it feel like? Heavy. Can I tell from just like, if we're looking at it, can I tell, is this- That's interesting. Is this cold iron? Yeah, oh yeah, is it iron? This cold iron. Mm. Oh, mm. I get it, <laughs> Anya. <laughs> Let's hold on to that. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. I need to borrow this, if that's okay. Oh. And I'm gonna put it in my pocket. Okay. <laughs> but Tanya, remember when prompted to reveal their name tag, the cast member has to show it. So if they do not show it, does that mean they're not a cast member? Yeah, I think just for the time being, maybe as much here. Look, she's traveling with us. So okay, yeah, yeah. Which, I know you we want the weapons, go along that okay train that of thought. Uh, no, I mean, if you want to, you can have it. Do you need this to be safe here, though? No. Okay. I, I don't. <laughs> so. She's traveling with us. I mean, we can always okay. present it. Just, I mean, I'm just thinking, I'm yeah. like... Let's just hold on to it for now. Oh, so if you present the name tag, That's what does that name make change. you... A cast member. 
Does it still say Aaron Fang? It still says Aaron Fang. Okay, cool. I'm thinking about melting this down and making something pointy. Yeah, but we've got to find. Yeah. Look, in due time. We gotta we gotta get cast first, otherwise we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Um to Mr. if we could. Okay. Kel. Yeah. Mr. and beyond. Mr. Kel. If it is Kel. I'm trying to give him a title. He doesn't deserve it. And He's just she, rich. <laughs> she leads the way. Uh the cat at this point had settled on her shoulder and is staring at all four of you behind her. Is it coming with us? Yeah, she's holding <laughs> the cat in her arms. Tanya's gonna like be walking behind her to try and like Pat yes. it on the head. She's trying like, to paw it away. <laughs> it looks like an Abigail. Do you have to feed the cat? No, not really. I mean, Strange. cat goes in and out. Never. Wants to. Wants to. Lucky cat. This cat is sus as fuck. The cat stuff, maybe. Maybe it's a cat cast. Do you have a name badge? Just like looking at the cat like. Yeah, it doesn't have a collar or anything, does it? It does. Is there, <laughs> Is there any metal on the collar? Yeah, the the round, um, the round, uh, you know how there's a collar and then there's a round name tag. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's just a C. Oh, C. Can I take that metal thing? <laughs> <You wanna try? laughs> Is it iron as well? Does it look the same? It looks the same as the name. Oh. Do you want to try? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, is the cat gonna stop me? Like, I, I think it could I, be an idea. Maybe leaving it on the cat just for the minute. Okay, I'll just I'll like, leave it alone. It, then. Like, we're all at the general consensus. I'm pretty sure that that's not really a cat. Well, it's definitely a cat. What, what, really, what size that cat actually is is up for debate. But, right. Um, yeah, to yeah. the Mister, we're good. As they're walking, um, Mister Locke or Cass is going to come up beside Aaron and. They fish around in their pocket and they pull out the little forget-me-not necklace and go, help me find you. Oh. She takes it and... Thanks. You didn't have to pay, like, a big price to get in here, did you? No, we, um... gave a fairy a Mustang and... Really nice car. Really nice car. That was it. Really? That was it? No, there was definitely more. I knew people. I got us <laughs> yeah, I got us like, in here. It's like, fine. Anything we had to like give anyone okay. to get in. I do owe you a new back door, by the way. Uh, what? Your house. Um, yeah, there was a whole thing. It's fine. We'll sort it out later, but just a FYI. Okay. Five tenths down? Is that what you said? Yes. And um, as you walk, um, Aaron does um, tell Kaz, uh, I thought that you like didn't care anymore. What's... Well, not that I didn't care. Um, I just... It was for the best. For the best. Uh, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, here's the tent for Mr. Does the tent look any different to any of the others at all? No, it looks the same. Mm. And on the outside, it does says Kel. Did he ask that you called him Mister, or is that just what you called him? Well, I can't say his name, so I just call him Mister. That's what, did he did he make it that you can't say his name? Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, would you like to come in with us? Uh, no. I have to grab something before the next event. Ideally, you won't have to go to the next event. What's the next event? There's gonna be games held within the big tent. We should probably be with you if we're gonna protect you, so maybe you shouldn't go just yet without us. Um, okay. Yeah, I agree. 
Is it time sensitive? Do you have to go now? I, I mean, I have to help prepare some stuff and... That's what you're helping prepare right now, the security of the event. Yeah. Loophole. Uh, okay. I... I mean, once we're inside, I'm sure if you need to go, he'll... Yeah, Mr. Kell will say we you're required to leave. Okay, all right. Um, and you see, Aaron just um, sort of raised the 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 cloth that's covering the tent and peek inside and talks softly. You can't hear what she's saying. Seems it almost seems like she's just mouthing the words at this point. Are we able to see sort of like lip read the general idea of what she's saying? You can try if you Absolutely. want to. I'll try. I would also like to activate ghost side. <laughs> mm. I, okay, so with the lip reading, I'd say at this point I want you to roll wits and uh inside. Sure. And for the ghost side, can you please roll? Can we all roll for that, or is that just the professor? Who's you doing? can all roll. Yeah. Right. Oh, I get hungrier. One. Four successes. I think she's speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible for me to roll what's on the inside as well? Ah, uh, yes, if you want to. Uh, four successes. Okay, with four successes and <laughs> thinking that she's speaking. <laughs> Um, with four successes for Dr. Yue and Professor Tristan, you would know that Aaron is saying that I brought four people who'd like to uh, make a deal um, if you'd like to meet with them. Um, and if you want me to stay, I'll come in with them. However, Dr. Yue, as you activate GoSight, you see something else. I'd say the first thing you see is that you see Aaron, right? Tiny Aaron, five foot one, five foot something along those lines. But the cat is gone. Mm. However, it's seems like it's way bigger. It's way bigger than the tent, and it seems to just be, uh, what's the word? Lounging mm. around the tent. It has the body of a lion, the tail of a scorpion, and three... Oh no, body of an eagle, tail of a scorpion, and three lion heads. So yeah, um, the cat is currently... Tanya, I think it's a good idea you leave the collar alone. Okay. Yeah. What's the cat currently? The head of three lions, the tail of a scorpion, and was it the body of a body of an eagle? And the kind body of. of an eagle. So is the cat? We can see the cat as a little cat. Yeah, it's a little cat. Yeah, so if, say chimera. Does the cat react at all? It's just staring at you all. Yeah, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> I get what you mean. Now. You Abigail. said it, 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 the cat likes humans. It likes them with sauce. <laughs> <laughs> likes them as a no, it's a big snack. softy. <laughs> And the other thing that you do notice, Dr. Yue, is the fact that on Aaron's ankle is what seems to be an inch thick um, shackles made of cold iron. I'll be having that. And I also tell the team that there is a shackle of cold iron on Aaron's ankle. Is it the left or right? It's or on the right. On the right ankle. Does it have a chain? Is it like chain? It's chain. Yeah. Is it? Is there a lock on it, or well, is it like where a? Where is the chain leading to? It's leading to nowhere. Seems oh. to be like um, whatever, she, wherever she's walking, it's trailing back. Ah. Interesting. It's probably chaining her to this area, or like yeah, this the general contract, plane. I'd assume. Is there a lock on the ankle part? There's none. Oh, you can't see it. Okay. So, Doctor Yue will have to ask the questions for that. <laughs> Um, does the shackle look like it's removable through any means other than chopping off Aaron's foot? 
Now there seems to be no seams. Okay. <laughs> on my magic. <laughs> seems to be seams. <laughs> yes, well, I mean, we can go one of two it's routes not here. A, <laughs> not a, not a too much seaming. Going shackle. I am a surgeon and I'm very good one at that. <laughs> oh my god! Physical shackle. It is metaphorical. It's like Aaron on a scale from one to ten. How much do you need your right foot? <laughs> <laughs> I don't say that. I'm, I'm joking. There, Do not say that. Shackled individuals around. If you look around, can you see others who are shackled Ooh. in a similar fashion? I will have a little mosey. Mosey yeah. around. Are we shackled so far? No. Okay. Tanya definitely is not. So the contract has not worked. No. Yeah, and I'll just um, I think I'll have like a general look around to see are there any other shackled people. Does the if I pull out the name badge, does it look different under Grove Sight? Yes. Ooh, it is glowing. So that's glowing. What does that mean? It's probably that's the power with the identification. It's radioactive. So we might need to give it back to him. <laughs> like, is is the shackle glowing? No. Okay. Cool. Cool. Interesting. I um. Aaron turns around, says, um, yeah, so you guys are welcome to come in with me. Beautiful, thank you. Let's meet Mr. How big is the tent? From the it seems to be the same size. Okay, so from the outside, it looks to be the same size. However, as you enter, it seems like you're entering a mansion. Mm-hmm. It's bigger on the inside. It's bigger on the inside. <laughs> How, just for so I can get an idea of the size of the chimera, because it was bigger than the tent. Hmm. Do you know, if I asked Dr. Yoda, the size of the cat, what did it, its dimensions roughly were? Like, are we talking 10, 20? Talking like the size of a bus? What, like, how exactly, how big is it exactly? It's a bit bigger than a bus. Maybe two bu- buses stacked on top of each other. Like cat bus size. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Around the size of, yeah, like two buses. <laughs> no, like Greyhound, like Sky Bus. <laughs> How many buses? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's our new standard yeah, of measurement. measurement. <laughs> How many Nintendo 64s? <laughs> this, this is American <laughs> measurement. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, well, I'll duck into the tent. I'll lift it up and gesture for everyone. After you. Yeah. And I duck in. And hold the flap just so it doesn't shut behind any of us. I haven't had that silliness happen. Okay. Uh, as you walk in, uh, it is a grand foyer. Um, it, there's even chandeliers on top. The the floor that was dirt is now marble, and everything just seems to be sparkling in this place. I bet it is. Um, there is one wall that is filled with books, and at an open door, where Aaron does head towards. I'd like to walk over to the bookshelf and just have a quick uh, look at the books to see what the title's on there. Yep. Last time I saw books of this size, the books were suspicious as hell. Well, the books itself is written in different languages. There's no recognizable title to me? No. Cool. There's no recognizable English or even human language in there. Is there anything, any recognizable language? Like... No human language. Right. Seems to be ever changing. In it's like alive, like the letters itself. Mm-hmm. It keeps on changing itself. I like to look for other glowing objects. Well, one of the glowing objects that you would immediately see is actually the bookshelf. Mm. Any one book in particular? It's just the whole bookshelf is just glowing, and if you look at it. The title itself is unreadable. Yeah. Um, but it keeps changing. Like the shapes keep changing on the cover. Yeah. Hey, Aaron, can you read this? Um, like pointing there... to literally any book. Just like, can you read this? Yeah, Red Riding Hood. Oh. So. It has to do with. Yeah. Magic. So, so because understand. she's a cast member, she can understand it. That's good to know. Um, the empty open door. 
Uh, yeah, Mister's waiting. So Let's go. Is the marble white or black marble? It's oh, black okay. marble. Cool. Of course it is. Is there anything in here that looks like a weapon? <laughs> that um, well, I'm I, just, I I'm just. We're gonna get weapons until we're cast. Yeah. I am and just asking. Can... Look, I'm <laughs> just asking. Just That's keeping all. an eye out. I'm oh, just sir, being. Sir. I just don't want you to grab it. Perceptive. I just don't want you to grab it. Please check though, because we. we well, need look. Anyway. If I know, I can always circle back. Yeah, yeah. Or there's vases. Um, there's a big rug, and it seems to be like um, those fancy double staircase going to the second floor. Mm-hmm. But other than that, there is just the room on the left side. Okay. Well, let's go through the room. We should find that ghost at some point for you as well that lights fires. <laughs> That's not a sentence I thought I'd ever say to you. Yeah. I wonder if it's like a certain part of them that lights fires and if I could <laughs> have that. Tristan's <laughs> walking in. <laughs> Mr. Lockhead's for the open door. <laughs> um, the moment you guys enter, all of you would notice that this place just seems almost identical to Professor Tristan's office. Mm-hmm. You know, like the desk, mm-hmm. like the wooden desk, the vast amount of books, dusty mm-hmm. old books. And it's quite um, different than the hallway itself. There's no fancy things in there. There's actually paperwork all strewn about. So is it like an exact copy of his office or it's just similar in the it's fact so that it's, ju- it's, just that, it's just that there's a lot of books here. Yeah. It's, not like, it's not like they've copied your memory of your office. Yeah. And like, that would be terrifying. It's just like, oh, it's just... But slightly. Different. It's like Tanya's, Tanya's exact copy. Like Tanya's like, it's like oh, this is where I put this. I was wondering where this was. I've been looking for this. Wow, isn't it so lucky that I just left this weapon right here? <laughs> <laughs> I just happened to leave a sniper rifle with <laughs> <laughs> on your desk. It's my haunted sniper rifle. <laughs> I You confiscated that it last time. Yeah, <laughs> that damn ghost gets around. Uh, look, it only causes minor issues. <laughs> and the other thing you would notice is that there is a gentleman what do you imagine a gentle, old gentleman would look like? White hair, excuse me, you don't have <laughs> 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 an old gentleman to look like, and I have no white hair. <laughs> yeah. um, white hair that's been parted and neatly on one side. Uh, he seems to be like late 50s, wearing a suit and tie that's black. Um, he is just sitting down writing uh, with a quill on seems to be parchments of paper and you see what seems to be a miniature version of the receptionist Mm. it's a tiny blob like as tall as the table that's just seems to be carrying uh stacks of books as it like wobbles around and puts it away or a small child in Mr. Locke's case. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small child wearing child what labor. seems to be. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh, the child labor laws here, not great in Mr. Locke's mind. <laughs> it seems to be, look, he looks like a squire for you, like a young squire with like black hair. Um, yeah, just a man with his grandson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a man with his grandson is a lot less suspicious than a man with his blob. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing going on here. Does he look up when we... Yes, he does take a minute to look up though. He kept writing and um, looks up and says, Oh, please sit down. Thank you. And there's sofas um, that's facing each other with a, a coffee table in between as he stands up and approaches all of you as you sit down. I appreciate the opportunity to sit down. As do we all. Well, uh, how may I help you, gentlemen and ladies? Uh, but first, um, do you still need Aaron here? We was promised Aaron that we would do our best to ensure her protection till we finished our conversation. So it's just hoping to make sure we indulge that. I didn't know that Aaron needed protection. So just in case. Do you feel like our protection that's given to every participants in this event is insufficient. No, we, we haven't had the opportunity to even view them, but as I'm sure you can appreciate as well that we don't like to just operate on guesswork, so if we haven't had the chance to verify, I'm sure your protections are absolutely up to the scratch, but until I know for sure. 
no insult was meant at all. And he looks towards Arian and asks, um, do you think that you're in danger? And Arian just gives a glance to all of you. Uh, I, I think so. Yeah, I think so, yes. <clears throat> well, if that's the case, uh, then we may need to improve the security of the event. Well, it uh, just so happens as well that, uh, as you may already be aware, but well, I'm gonna have to show you, uh, Mr. Kell, is that the correct title? Yes, that is me. Excellent, Mr. Kell, I'm the professor. This is my associates. Kiki. Lock. Mr. Mark. That's a good name, Lock. Mm. Yeah. I haven't had a lot of Locks um, walk around here for a long time. Well, lucky for you, we. <laughs> and he looks proud. Not as proud as I do. <laughs> <laughs> Too proud, old gentleman. Yeah. Being proud and proud. <laughs> it's like Aaron is just <laughs> taking superficial <Wishing>. damage. <laughs> um, I I don't actually know if. Well, I have no doubt you know everything that happens here, but I want to make sure I take the opportunity to introduce myself fully as well. Uh, I am the head of the Inquisition Research Facility nearby. And of course, we wanted to come and have a chance to see and a chance to experience everything here. You're hunters. No, they're not the right term, unfortunately. There are hunters who work with others, but we're not, we don't hunt. We get a chance to observe and understand. I'm a scientist. I'm a surgeon. I'm security. Thank God. I was, <laughs> yeah. I was, I was about to just be like, Locke's a badass. <laughs> for, I'm a hunter. <laughs> um, if, but as Aaron has said as well, the security, if you feel that your security might, uh, could use maybe an impartial review, I'd be ha happy to potentially offer my services. I'd like a job. Well, the Garu did offer their security first, but if it's seen as insufficient, then... Well, I've heard apparently one of them recent, just prior on our arrival, we heard one, there was some sort of incident in regards to them. And they definitely have their uses, don't worry. I get, they're excellent, but they're more of a, the hammer. We're, we're here to be more scalpel or ideally more just eyeglasses or lens we're just here to review and potentially suggest we we have no interest in assaulting any guests charisma and persuasion professor tristan as um as mr kel turns towards aaron and says um you did good roll for this one <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to burn a willpower. Yeah. I'm not doing too bad. But yes, um, Mr. Kel turns towards Aaron and says, if you'd continue your um, duties as the temporary game lead, I'll have, I'll, I'll, after you finish, you can meet your friends and their lodging. Six Is that us? Is us the friends? Yeah? yeah? Okay, just checking. Sorry, I didn't know how many friends Aaron has. <laughs> Six. Six. Um, God. Is that all right with you all? I missed that. Sorry, I was focusing on my terrifying. <laughs> 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 I'm yeah. sorry, I was just <laughs> negotiating with the Fae. The first thing I said, let's not do what we get. <laughs> um, Mr. Kel did say, did ask Aaron to continue with her temporary game lead uh, duties, mm -hmm. and she will meet you. Once the sun is up in your lodgings. Mm. Once the sun is up, so yeah. I'll be out, but that's okay. Um, sure. But what of my suggestion to review, potentially come in, review security? 
Yes, I already told, well, I already told Candy that a lot of the securities that she hired are not up to scratch. I saw You know Candy? Yes. I know Candy. Candy will vouch for me. Just saying Candy's good value. Um, yeah. Sorry, I just heard a name I recognize and got excited. Um... So the security, so we can understand that obviously your ex, would you be willing to extend us temporary cast membership to review just the security? I haven't had a lot of mortals um, actually get right to the point. You're busy, I see. So I, I, you may be astounded to hear this, but this is very familiar to my office. And I can only imagine that running an extra dimensional version of what's just normal bureaucracy. Like, I had hair once. I fear that I may be losing mine as well. <laughs> uh, it's, it's all right, embrace it. Roll, lean into it. Then I'll still do. All right. I will grant and extend a temporary cast member role as security. To all four of you. Well, security consultants, if we can, just so we can review. I don't want to step on the Garu's balls. Very well. Security consultant. Can you give us, before we, just, so I want to make sure we understand as well, was we, all, we each have unique uh, strengths. Uh, Tanya here, especially in terms of, I know there's no firearms allowed in here, but uh, blind spots, firing points, if someone were to attempt to smuggle one in, uh, she'll definitely be able to assist with that. Uh, lock in the same lock, maybe even more traditional security operations, fire teams. Uh, Dr. Yue, anything supernatural whatsoever, and I'm happy to run look through logistics. Uh, what is it that can we get a full understanding of what being a temporary cast member does entail us to, so we just don't, we don't make the mistake that Garu do when we interrupt proceedings? Right, temporary cast member means that you will not be able to leave the event until it is concluded. So the next three days. Sure. You will not be harmed by other cast members, nor, nor manipulated. So any and all dominate dealings. Does that extend also to guests? Guests are, from what I would say, they're not allowed to... Guests are not allowed to hurt cast members. And if they do, even just to threaten a cast member, mm -hmm. because we have zero policy towards abuse towards our members, it will be dealt with consequence. What? exactly are the consequences it differs that's what we're here to review and find out <laughs> um excellent well that does most definitely sounds good in terms of uh well as you heard i mentioned that apparently i don't know if it was a specific cast member but one of the garu seemed to get into an altercation with it's a group I, well, at least i was informed about up near the pub so obviously we might go there and investigate that immediately. Um, should we find ourselves in a circumstance that, you know, there's some guests who uh, require a little bit of extra clarification on the no harming or the consequences point of view, is there somewhere we could pick up just for that contingency protection at all? Is there anything you can offer a source, an armory potentially that we can just make sure we have something on hand should something occur? If they do try to harm you, you are all going to be protected by magic. This is why you need to keep your name tags on you at all times. Understood. Once it's given to you. Sure. Um, what happens if you misplace your name tag or it's taken from you? Well, you will have no protection for the duration of the event. Unfortunately, I do stress the point to not lose your name tags or give it away it cannot be forcibly taken from you you will have to willingly give it away can you take it back once if someone else let's say someone not that it's the case but someone gets to tricks it you it out of you 
does that protection then extend to them or can they just return it back to you? The name tags itself is in a way a barrier, a shield. So if it's taken away, whoever has it will be protected for the duration. However, if if the other person willingly gives it back, then there has to be some kind of, um, in a way, punishment. That's fair. Um, for the original holder. Of course. I, I, That's I'm why I would suggest that you do not... Take someone's name tag. Yes. Wrong. Yes, of course. Or give just going to be sidling up real tag. close to Erin. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> um, where do we acquire these name tags? Uh, here. And he moves away, uh, starts writing with this quill, uh, dips it in ink, starts writing on the paper, and then opens a drawer and starts writing on what seems to be a uh what's the word glass Mm -hmm. and as he's writing it it feels like he's simply writing on air it doesn't seem like he's writing on glass even though you saw him physically take a block of glass he starts writing and claps his hand while he's distracted can i just put aaron's he has to be given back. Badge back in her pocket. Just, okay. I'm giving it. I'm, I'm, I'm giving. No, she was still here, wasn't she? No, she, no, left. left. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah, we'll get. That's the first point, though. Don't worry. We'll get it back to her. <laughs> yeah. I thought she was still here. Um. Thank you, Mr. Kel. And he presents you all with your own badges. However, there's no name on it. <laughs> <laughs> there's no name on it. There's just no name on it. You will have to write your name on it. Most people don't want to use their real names in here. Mm-hmm. However, it is required. Does he have a name badge on? Yes, it's Mr. Kell. Mr. Kell is his real name. Mm. Um, when you say real name as well, because obviously as the professor, that is how everyone knows me here. Even just your first name. Understood. That's fine. I'm known by a lot of people as Kiki. That's the only name they know me by. Does it have to be my, my government name? It's to be. It feels. Unfortunately. Yeah. Bureaucracy. Yeah. yeah. How long are we bound to these terms for the three days? End of for the, the three days. Yeah. Till the end of the event. End. So was there an armory just like, no. just checking, magic. just like magic, but is there also an armory as well as magic? Fortunately not. <sighs> most, yeah. most of our guest even just the cast member like the garu are held under a certain protection that even though anything goes we will try to protect people as much as we can because we do not want a sudden increase of um collateral well even that may be the case but apparently there was still enough time for a lot of the people to do enough damage down at the pub like seems like what there is isn't enough. I don't know about you guys, but that makes me nervous. Uh, it depends whether or not the Garu is just doing their job. It's true. If we find weapons and confiscate them during the rev- our security review, as cast members, is that while of course we'll have to return them to you for inventory and storage, in our operations of doing so, that's permitted. Uh, yes, uh, as long as you surrender it at the end of the night. Of course. Hmm. Nice, thank you very much. Um, as part of the first part of the sequel, well, there's a few things. We'll, I'll come into the review a bit soon. Uh, you've given us, obviously, great leeway. Is there anything specific results-wise or deliverables that you're looking for that we can provide? We want to ensure this. We, don't, we want this to be a good relationship. What can we potentially provide for you other than a good job? A report, please. A report? A written report. A handwritten report. That's all, right. That's all we use nowadays. Um, can I be, please, is there a, what, what's his quill look like, actually? What does it, can, am I able to identify what sort of bird it came from? If it's a bird? I'd like to roll intelligence in the cult, please. It's a supernatural <laughs> bird. Oh. oh my God, it's the great dodo. <laughs> 
They're not extinct, they're fae. They don't do birds. They're so fat. <laughs> There's a lot of dice. <laughs> <laughs> what I, watch me get nothing. <laughs> Watch me go right into despair and hunter mode <laughs> and then be like, no, I need to know, ask everything. It's still four successes, but it's still pretty freaking rubbish. With four successes, you would recognize that it came from a griffin. Wow. Mm. That is a phenomenal quill. Um, is there, for my written report, I want to make sure, obviously, from my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, the intention matters in this realm just as much as the actual thing. Is there somewhere I could acquire or I could be given a quill for the Of explosives? course, uh, I will ask V to send you all one. Mm -hmm. I know the beautiful creature outside would it be, is, I'm not sure, I'm not fully across them. Beautiful creature outside. The fairy one. The chimera. Mm. In Chester. Chester, yes. Would is is it something Chester may be able to provide? Would one of Chester's feathers potentially suit? I will ask. However, I cannot guarantee. Of course, I don't want to take it. It has to obviously freely given. Um, but yeah, if not, obviously, if yeah, if the what you require for the report to be given, I'm happy to. Yes, of course. Well, considering the fact that. Aaron will be going to, oh, will be sent to your lodgings at mm -hmm. the end of this night. Um, I can just ask uh, if Chester is willing to come, which is not that hard considering the fact that Chester is quite attached to the human. I do yeah. not understand. Mm. Yeah. You can ask him yourself if you'd like. Excellent. I appreciate it. Thank you. Chester speaks English, right? Yes. <laughs> checking I don't I didn't speak chimera I would love to I also noticed that beautiful bookshelf out there as well is it possible for well I guess now we'll be able to read them is that correct of course beautiful thank you well um, I'll get that report to you written up we'll re perform our review and yeah, get the uh, report across to you and um feel free to go around and enjoy the event no oh, we'll have oh, to you can't you can't thank review you. what you don't see um, the first step of commencing the review, if I could as well, uh, is potentially if we are able to be, well, at least present for the negotiation of all temporary staff coming on board or, and staff or cast, so that way we're fully across whomever may be operating under those rules and who's not. That will be quite hard as it falls under my... Oh, but you have the. De I'm not saying that we have the decision. Yeah, it's fully within your. It's just we can be present to review who is coming in and out. I cannot allow that. Okay. Well, I'll note that down as part of the thing. Not a problem at all. I appreciate that. Thank you. I do not need consulting, unfortunately. No, no I wouldn't think about it. I <laughs> would not dare say you would. Thank you, Mr. Kel. Uh, we'll uh, report to you. End of the night, just leave it in your lodging or call V. Do you want, I'm happy to put, give you something by the end of the night. I can't promise a comprehensive report in that time frame. But I mean, the night is already ending. Yeah, I, I'm, I can make sure that we perform a three day review during our three day event. And then at the end, I'm even happy to sit down with you and annotate to you while I also write down. What's the name of, can I, can I ask your, associate here and I'll gesture to Black Flubber. This is one. One? Uh, is W-A-N there... if you see like the name tag is W-A-N. <laughs> Does one. it like, bubble out? <laughs> yeah. Um, is it possible even during this event and maybe I can get something to you a bit faster if we have someone similar to one to accompany us and I can annotate to them as they scribe and then take that draft report and finalize it? Hmm. Child, do you want to go with them? Mr. Locke, you would see that, you know, this, this tiny child, like maybe 11 years old, young scribe, um, stops holding the books in his hands and goes like, uh, yes. And you would hear little 
yes from this blob. Did it like it, where did the noise come from? Like does it have a mouth or does it just no, does it just vibrate? Like, <laughs> like, how does it's this just work? coming from the general it's direction rough. of the blob. Oh. It's like an amoeba. <laughs> oh, thank you, Juan. Well, um, I appreciate that. Uh, we'll get you the cool one. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kell. You've been it's been excellent to have a chance to speak to you and I'll make sure that we deliver everything we can and enjoy the event as well. It looks excellent. If there is nothing else that I can do for everyone in here. Does anyone else want anything? No. Also, thank you, Mr. Hal. It was pleasure doing this deal with all of you. I like to shake his hand. And he does stand to shake your hand as well. <laughs> like, we have, I'm assuming we have the same watch. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just different colors. Yeah, it is. Are we now shackled? If you use your ghost sight, yes, you are. I've mm. never thought I'd say this, but thank God we're shackled. <laughs> <laughs> right, so the name badge is still nameless. Yes. But we are now shackled. You are now shackled. So it's actually not compulsory for us to write the name on the name badge. That's terrifying. No. Um, actually, how do we write our names on this? Like, is it just with a... Just write it with your finger. Sure. What happens if we don't write our name? Out of curiosity. Like... For security measures, purely. That's a good question. Well, it can be taken away from you uh... by other individuals. So you can barter it away. However, you are bartering away your protection. Does the protection only extend to the name on? Yes. Okay, cool. So if you have, so I can understand this. So, okay. So it doesn't exactly extend only on the person's name, whoever's name is on there. It extends to whoever's holding it. But, uh, but if but the you owner have someone else's name to tag, you're in trouble. Yes. Cool. So in, in a way, this is your guarantee to me as the mm. event planner that you will not just be giving away your badges oh. and you are taking, uh, what's the word? The Accountability badge. for your own possessions. Of course. Mm. Uh, right, Professor Tristan. I write Dr. E, my real name. Look, right, Cassandra. Locke just draws a lock. <laughs> 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 no. I guess Tanya writes, I think Tanya's like for, for a really long time looking at it and it's like, Tanya. Um, is there anywhere so you suggest we start? Is there any concern areas, do you think? Or maybe we just start with Erin as Erin felt maybe. Like she was in danger and we'll just walk Yeah, backwards. we should head back to our room and... I just... I mean, morning daylight is almost here. I think your companion will need to be back in your lodging. Mm -hmm. I already instructed Erin to go back to your lodging. Uh, you'll get a call from the receptionist V mm -hmm. once she gets there. Um, do I have time to go speak to Chester about this quill before sunrise? I think Chester is with Erin, no? Yes, to my knowledge. So Chester will come to us. Okay, cool. All right, let's go. Right. Let's go back right. to our room. Thank you, Mr. Kell. Um, if we need to reach you, obviously, with anything priorities, just coming here to the tent, or is there a faster way we can reach you? Oh, find a mirror. Excellent. Just say your name into the mirror. Any reflective mirror can be routed back to me. Terrifying. Just mirrors or any reflective surfaces? Any service? reflective surfaces. Beautiful. Thank you. It usually goes through to V, but... Mm. And when do you want to want to... Well, the review started now. If one, I've already got findings I need to start noting down if one's happy to join. All right. Child, go. See, the blob just starts to move towards you. <laughs> um, what to say to one? It's like, do you, should we wait until we get the quill for you to start noting things down, or do you have a good memory? I have a good memory, sir. No worries. All right, well, come, let's go. We'll return to our rooms. Unless anyone has anything else they want to do. I just, on my way out, I had, I'd had like to have another glance at the magical bookshelf. Oh, good idea. The magical bookshelf, it 
as it was once you are have made a deal become a cast members have stopped moving like the words and it is a massive collections of fairy tale books mm. i'd like to take let's say oh i guess they're all there right let's look at red riding hood because we know red riding hood is there if we've glanced through it how does the story follow red riding hood or does it end a little bit differently it ends a little bit differently I bet it oh, of course how, does, how does this red riding hood end well, the Red Riding Hood that you know of, I would like to hear it from your perspective first. I don't remember Red Riding Hood. Because either. Red Riding Hood story, in every, at least, every child remembers it differently. Different. I yeah. think it's from my recollection. It's Little Red Riding Hood goes to visit grandmother. She's told not to slow and down and not yeah. to stop, but she does. She, does. she meets the wolf and tells him that she's on her way to grandmother's house. Yeah. So the wolf goes over and eats the grandmother. Yes. And pretends to be the grandma while Little Red Riding Hood goes to visit. And then when the when Red Riding Hood goes in, it's, oh, grandmother, what big eyes you have what big uh, all the better to see you with my dear what big ears you have all the better to hear you with my dear what big teeth you have all the better to eat you with my dear and then eats her and then the woodcutter comes in at the last second and cuts, cuts the wolf her. open and saves the grandma and red riding hood and then stuffs the wolf with stones and That's throws right. them in the river yep the story in this one is quite different first of all it talks about the monster that is Red Riding Hood. Mm. Talks about how every every town is quite scared of Red Riding Hood. If a child sees Red Riding Hood in the in the forest, they need to immediately come home, or they will be taken away to grandmother's house. Mm. The wolf in here is a mob of mortals who proceeded to pretend or at least infiltrate Red Riding Hood's house in this case it's what's the word cave yeah den den and in there Red Riding Hood is tricked and proceeded to be drowned. So from this point of view, Red Riding Hood's the antagonist and the wolf, is it still like akin to like, is, it, is there something lupine about the mortals or is it just they've, they've taken his position? The wolf's just a group of people. The, the drawing itself is just, you know, it, it seems to be hand drawn. Mm. So this, this uh, people is just drawn as a bunch of um, shadows, silhouettes. Who's the author? It doesn't say. It's just Mr. Kill. Mr. Kill, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Is there any other books on the shelves that like stick out? Oh, uh, there's Alice in Wonderland. I was yeah, looking Yeah, I was going to say. Can I, can Tanya grab down Alice in Wonderland? Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to flick through it and see. It's photos of us. <laughs> It seems to be the Alice in Wonderland actually follows the same storyline. Okay. Extremely but the, the, the difference is the fact that every illustration is hand-drawn. Is Do we recognize anyone in any of the illustrations at all? You would recognize uh, at least Mr. Kell as the Mad Hatter. Mm -hmm. Seems to be uh, as they are introduced. Uh, Tanya would recognize the queen, the red queen, as candy. However, the style is way different than what she usually wears. Mr. Locke would recognize, um, as, as you go through the, the story, uh, you would recognize the the rabbit as ghost. Ooh. 
for everyone else is this extremely handsome individual. Is this um, the person that we saw on the security camera footage at the no. casino in the hoodie? This, no. It's not Brad no. Pitt. He is, uh, seems to be young, like 19 years old, um, have impeccable white hair that's just thrown about. He looks, he looks like, a, honestly, he looks like an idol. If that's first this thing is that who's you know, Haley's with right now. Yeah, Ghost is with Haley. Is Haley in this? Doesn't seem okay. to be. So down the rabbit hole we go, I guess. Yeah. No, yeah. What does who does Alice look like? Nothing. No. Honestly, the face of Alice seems to be scratched out. Um, just so I can just with the white hair. So from there's no like in this drawing, Mister Kell and Ghost, short of the white hair, there's no other similarities, is there? They both have pale blue eyes, but aside Is there like a familial resemblance? I'd say yes. <laughs> oh no. No 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 no. Yeah, that's what I thought. Mm, I hate that for us. I hate that for us. <laughs> that depends. Yeah, we don't we don't know for sure. Like Mr. Kell's fine. Maybe Ghost is fine. I don't have any reason to believe otherwise. There goes my I know he has my he them. has my cousin. Yeah, but you know, Making your him go away here. permanently. No, no, he's taken he's her. Your cousin's my just best here. Friend. Uh, yeah, but I don't, I don't. Do I know that? Do we know? We do we don't know. Ghost stalked. Like we in oh, character, we, we, we don't in know. The, yeah. In the in the debrief. Yeah, I, it was. But yeah, uh, yeah, but you haven't told us that that's Ghost, have you? I do not remember. <laughs> no, I don't think you did. I don't. He didn't, he didn't explain who Ghost yeah. is and what he looked like. Oops, sorry. <laughs> so only right. Mr. Lockwood. Well, right. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's plenty of stuff I haven't You told see anyone. this. <laughs> Do you react to seeing him as the White Rabbit? No, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> of course not. It's, uh, Mr. it's Mr. Lock. Like, yeah, I was just wondering, yeah. like, if I like, do we notice a reaction? Because I'll ask you. Mr. Lock, you've started blinking in intervals <laughs> of every 15 seconds as opposed to every 17 seconds. What's got you so flustered? <laughs> um, well, I think. As part of our review, let's let's go back to our room. Let's go back to our room uh, and ensure that we begin. Maybe we'll go over what we want to achieve out of this. Can we borrow these books? Uh, one does speak up. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Alice in Wonderland book with me. Yeah. Mm, as long as you return yeah. it at the end of this day. End of this day? At the end of this event. Oh, end of the, the event. event. Right. Okay, I was gonna say because the day is like over. Over. I wonder if the sun, as we walk, like I wonder if the sun would affect you in the same, like obviously let's not test it, but if the sun would affect you in the same manner as it would affect you where well, we're I from. Well, I could wait and not go to sleep and That's see if true. I fall over. That, or maybe, just sit, maybe sit in the couch. So don't have, <laughs> let's not be that dramatic. <laughs> but um, is there one, I'm assuming that you're going to be honest with us if we ask you questions. You're cast, you're not allowed to manipulate us. But yes. If we eat or drink some of the food here, is there gonna be any, like that, do that doesn't constitute any sort of agreement or debt accrued, does it? No, as long as you keep eating the ones inside the lodging. That's it, mm -hmm. not a problem. Everything else in the pub, if you do not pay for it and they say it's free, then you are. You've agreed, it constitutes an agreement. Beautiful, uh, do we, is there room service in the lodgings? Yes. Beautiful. Do we speak? To, can you do that? I don't know if you're connected to V or if you would V are the same. I don't know how it works. Is that a rude question? Probably is. I'm sorry. No, uh, I it it's no V and I are different. V is older than me, so I. You can always order through the mirror. That's how you can contact anybody. Beautiful. So just any when you say anybody, any cast member or anyone within the event. Well, if you go through, in a way, V is the one that takes all the calls. Okay. Unless she is unavailable, then the doorman will do it. Mm hmm You've met her. Um, but V would usually connect you to everyone else you would like to talk to. So you want I tea or coffee? Blood? I require some sustenance, please. Yeah, I would like something to eat, but I also want to check in with V when we get back. I want to know yeah. if there's been any messages left yeah, for me. Course. Yeah, let's just head to V, I think. Yeah. 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 All right, as we walk, I'll say to Juan, um, can you, you, I imagine if I need something for this review, you'll be able to acquire that for me, is that correct? Yes, can as you, long as it's within reasons. Of course. Hmm. 
No, I'm not trying to break any rules. Can you please put together for me a comprehensive list of current cast and temporary cast and what it, their roles are assigned to, just so I can perform an audit? I know, obviously, we're not that role, that list will be changing constantly, but just as it stands at the moment. And if new names are added to it, just so we can keep judge, we're not going to consult on it. That Mr. Kell has already made it clear that he doesn't need require consulting on it. It's just more so that if it becomes relevant to consulting someone else. I can have it ready for you by the morning. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Juan. Yeah, I've been very helpful. Wait, by the morning or? Yeah, by the morning, sorry. The day's... The day's about already just, ending. So yeah. in about... Yeah, like, that's yeah. very quick. God, you're an efficient blob. I like you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have you ever considered watching <laughs> the Inquisition? <laughs> <laughs> the acid. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, I can't. That's, you're trying, that's to, totally you're trying to poach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what deals he's made, and I don't want to piss off whoever owns him. Kel. Yeah. yeah. Can we go and just see V before we head up to our room? Of course. Um. And you do reach the lodging. It is the the sky is becoming a bit brighter, mm-hmm. which is a bit of a worry. You see a lot of people hurrying back to the lodgings. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of people in the lodgings who are just waiting around or waiting for their friends, chatting around. Anyone we recognize? Doesn't seem to be. Okay. Is there a rough amount of numbers that we? I know we've already seen some Nosferatu, uh, and I know there's Gary here. Are we able to, like, at a glance, tell, like, I guess they're running, they're probably kindred, but are we able to tell at a glance what sort of things there are and what sort of numbers they're in? Uh, I'd say wits and awareness. Ooh, can we all roll? Yes. Two. Three. There are people here. Four. Uh, three. Okay. We two successes. You don't notice anything. Three successes. You would know that um, there are a seems to be a huge amount of supernatural creatures around. However, identification is quite hard at this point, as most of them try to masquerade as mortals. Why? I'm <laughs> silly. With four successes, oh, it was you, Professor Tristan, I got four, yes? Yes. You would know that, um, with four successes, you would know that the amount of supernatural creatures outweigh the mortals. Maybe you've seen 80% supernatural, 20% mortal. Uh, There is a variety of um, blanks that you have seen. You've seen a gangrel walking around seems to be bruja just chatting with a bunch of mortals um there seems to be some venture and some toreador in their own little group Mm -hmm. and it's not just the blanks but there's also fake creatures walking around uh and um good amount of wraiths oh god but they are wearing seems to be attendant outfits okay so they cast or their staff. Can I just ask V if there's been any messages left for me? Yes. Uh, it came from uh, your cousin. Yep. And she did say that she will talk to you tomorrow night. If you'd like that, please meet at the mirrors. Do, do you know where she is now? I assume that everyone is currently resting for the night, uh, for the morning, rather. Okay. V, can I please have some blood delivered to my lodgings? Of course. Human blood. Hu- yeah, human blood. Is there any preference for the human blood? Someone who's quite melancholic. <laughs> <laughs> A depressed individual, please. <laughs> Would you Actually, like it in the bag or in person? I think a bag would suffice for now. Thank you, V. Of course. With the so the blanks, the fae, the wraiths, eighty percent supernatural. Is it majority blanks that make up the like out of the supernatural? Like, is there of that eighty percent like um, it's majority kindred then that they here? Majority is kindred. Um, are there, is there anyone who like are the mortals here? Do they look like they're like they're unaware mortals or like 
Mm-hmm. I'm a, or and they're just they're similar to Locke. They're just not piercing through the glamour, or they are similar to Mister Locke. Oh. The glamour on this place <laughs> <laughs> just caught them. Strong. Um, can can you for like for me? Can you uh, send up like fifteen mangoes and like three liters of Red Bull, please? <laughs> Course. Awesome. Okay. There was no med- what the message I had said for Deacon Winters. There's been no response, has there? No response. That's fine. I'd imagine that the response will come the next morning. Next, morning. Uh, That's next night, rather. Um, if you could. Maybe if I could amend it. If the message. Is it possible to amend the message if it hasn't been seen? I'm, I don't know if there's a supernatural scene or read. Of course. Um, because the plan was to meet the in the next evening, but uh, I have work to do, unfortunately. So maybe uh, just during my review, well, you're gonna if I can get a comprehensive list. As I said, I'm getting a list from one of staff. Maybe if I can get an overall guest list as well, and then I'm sure I'll come across him during my review. Do you? Hmm? So see, if you just can't cancel that message, it's fine. Okay, so cancel the message. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Question, is there any, like, natural plants or, like, gardens in or around this hotel? There are, yes. Okay, good to know. Um, you know what? The review can, yeah. we can, I can, I'm happy to do the rest. Yeah, let's, let's go up to the room. Am I feeling any symptoms of day sleep? Yes, you are. Oh. Good thing we didn't test that. <laughs> you would have turned into a moldy piece of bread. <laughs> I would have deteriorated quite rapidly. As as you are all inside the elevator, it it is quite huge. It looks like a cell service elevator that's supposed to be bringing up people that's up to 20 plus. Um, as the elevator door closes, it does not move. If you look at the elevator buttons, there are a lot of buttons that's randomized. It's not the normal ground floor, second floor, third floor. It says 8, 1,853, 2,520, 10,841, and so on and so forth. Is there a number 81 on there? No. There is, however, a slot for a key. Oh. We have the key. Yeah, we've got the key. Can we... I'll check in the key and then... Yep. So you put the key on and turn it, and all the buttons just fall off. So it's all fall off on the floor, and... What are those buttons made of? It's all wood. Wood? All right. Okay. I would like to ask you how many did you grab? I'm going to grab, like, 20. 20 pieces? Yep. Unless there's a reason why I shouldn't. No. If we there is, we find know what glue, it is. we can stack the buttons together and then file it down to form a stake. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way your mind works. <laughs> okay. Interesting. All right. Does it take us to our room? Uh, it does. The only button that's left is actually your room number, which is 81. Yep. Point. And the moment you press it, thing, the door opens and it reveals what seems to be a standard size, not a standard size, but a huge, let's say, penthouse sized mm-hmm. um, living area uh, with four bedrooms yep. or at least four doors going to the bedroom okay. and with my ghost side that's still activated, is anything glowing no. or out of the ordinary? Except for the mirror, but aside from that, nothing. Cool. cool. Is there a kitchen in here? Yes, there is a kitchen. Has my blood been delivered? No. I will wait patiently while can, I fight. Is Aaron in here yet? Basely. No. no. Can I go and have a look through the kitchen? Yeah, of course. Do so I find as anything? You, as you all step out of the elevator, um, you can look around. There is four doors that leads to seems to be four bedrooms. Mm-hmm. Um, you're looking around through the kitchen. It seems to be a metal stove top. However, there is no gas line to it. Um, 
everything else what seems to be like all the cutleries are all plastic and it's just very bare is there pots and pans no is there any cleaning products no it's like an ikea um display, display. right so how do you heat if you've got a stove top how does it heat is it like just with magic you try to turn it on and the the stove top itself like the flat uh, stove top just starts heating up is the, the is the stove top like removable from the top or is it like built into the can you can try can i try i'll have to make it roll uh strength and brawl please <laughs> <laughs> two you can one crit <laughs> so <laughs> two crit is what's needed for it to be dang uh, so you try to pry it off. It's like drilled into the t- marble top. Okay. Uh, as Tanya is doing that, Mr. Locke is just going to casually go to like all of the side doors and just like check that they're all clear. The first door there. that you open, Mr. Locke, uh, I will have to ask you, can you describe to everybody and including the audience, what does Mr. Locke's, Cassandra Locke's, Childhood bedroom looks like. Uh, uh, Cassandra Locke's childhood bedroom. Can I take a second to figure that out? <laughs> As Cassandra Locke, um, Mr. Locke is frozen, most likely in shock. Uh, we will move the camera to. Professor Tristan and uh, Dr. Yue, what do you... Uh, Dr. Yue would actually also be looking for a room, one of the bedrooms that potentially doesn't have a window. Mm-hmm. Are any of them without a window? Pick a door. Uh, let's say door four. Okay, door number four, let's say. Uh, the moment you open this door, Dr. Yue, can you please explain to the audience and everybody else in the table, what does Dr. Yue's childhood bedroom when she was still human look like um it would be a very stereotypical looking asian immigrant bedroom so it's quite bare with just the bare essentials the items are kind of all like cheap looking and plasticky some of it is quite um you can see that it's been through a bit of use there's probably a single bed that's like a ikea the cheapest ikea single bed with like a mattress and some um some covers there will be a writing desk and not much else that is the view that greets you however there is no windows in this room that's amazing can can any of us see this when like ua opens the door yes what era does it look like it's from um, it is from the early 90s. So probably with a bit of um, just... E- Backstreet w- Boys. <laughs> like, um, this would be back home. So it would be pure white plaster walls that has a bit of black markings on it. It was pristine and pure white ones, but you can see that maybe someone scrubbed something up against it and it's left a bit of black marks all over the place. And the, the floor would be tiled. Mm. Oh God, I'm getting <laughs> <laughs> I know this place. Yeah. <laughs> it's always tiled. Yeah, it's always tiled. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. But um, is... Dr. Yue is still able to fight off day sleep long enough for her sustenance to arrive. Yes, as uh, as you open the door, uh, at least the there would be a doorbell ringing out, and if somebody would like to open the door, yeah, it's just a floating attendant clothes and seems to be a tray of uh, bags of blood. Thank you, Dr. Yue takes it. Where does this come from? The, the sustenance, like, is this just sort of created? Is it somewhere great? Or do you actually source these from somewhere? Who do you ask? Attended? There's no answer. Fair enough. 
Well, Juan's still with us. Mm. We could ask Juan. That's true. Dr. Rhea does not wait. She's already like... <laughs> <laughs> like ask Juan. <laughs> <laughs> Does your turn expectantly to Oh yes. Yeah, one at the moment is sitting uh in one of the on the sofa, at, like the edge of the sofa. It Aww. doesn't exactly like the blob, the bottom of the blob doesn't reach the floor. Oh, I'm too short one. Oh it's a really short blob. Um but one does answer. Um it is freely given donations or payment for some of the services that they um Acquired. Is there a kitchen somewhere where these are all sourced, or are they just, is it stored somewhere? I am not privy to that information, unfortunately, as I am not part of the kitchen crew. Or is that you? Where is the kitchen? Well, it should be in one of those tents. Good to know. I think Tanya's going to go and check out room number three, I guess. To check out room number three. Tanya, can you please explain to the audience and everyone in this table as you open the door, what does Tanya's childhood bedroom look like? See, um, I think that's difficult because Tanya moved around a lot as a kid, so I don't know which... Probably the happiest childhood bedroom. Yeah, so I think there's probably two beds in her bedroom and like two single beds. They're both pink and there's like... It's obviously a room from a house that is like a very nice house, but not many personal touches mm-hmm. on it because they moved around a lot. So they'd go somewhere, set up and have to move not long after. So everything in there is nice, but there's not a lot of permanent touches to the room and there's not a lot of clutter or things that would collect dust. But there's two beds for like two kids and like stuffed toys on the bed, pink bedspreads, things like that. That's the thing that you would see as you open that door. Did you open door number two or one? Number Love. one. Cool. I'll go to door number two then. Professor Tristan. Well, I didn't have a childhood. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there is inside there, the room that it would be is entirely white like tiles almost. It's a, it looks like a cell. And there's just a small single bed in the middle of it and there's just children's toys all stumbled around. Uh, One of the walls is a glass wall that people can see through and there's a big vent on the roof as well. And he'll just, he he doesn't even stop, he just opens the door, walks in and shuts the door and goes straight into the room. Okay. Just shuts the door behind him. Yeah. He's seen that room too. Well, he spends a lot of time in that room, so... There's nothing new for you. Just opens it and just he's like, "All right, good evening, or good morning. I'll see you all tomorrow night." Just shuts the door. Good morning. One, get some rest. We have work to do tomorrow. (laughs) Yeah, you see the blob just (laughs) (laughs) like it congeals. Um, as I I guess that Doctor Yue is going to yeah. Doctor Yue has um gloped down two entire bags of blood, and she has now gone back to her room and waved everyone good day and closed it. Tanya and Mr. Locke, as uh, Dr. Yue says, good uh, good morning. Uh, there's another doorbell. I think Tanya is going to be like going to that door. like Opening it. Uh, you would see that um, Aaron is there. Come in, come in, come in. Uh, she is also holding the cat that you now know as Chester. Chester. Oh, adorable. Um, I think Tanya's going to immediately be like, I'm going to give this back to you. Uh, okay, you don't need it anymore? No, uh, and you probably shouldn't be giving it out to anyone else. Um, okay. Thanks for letting me borrow it. Um, no, no worries. I have a question. Mm-hmm. When Chester is in his like, because he's like he's really like big, right? Does anyone trim his claws? And if they do, can I have some? Because they'd be like I, sharp, I, right? Yeah, the cat has sharp claws. Yeah. I mean, sure. I need. I think I need UA for this. I think <laughs> I need. I need someone who can actually see this Where thing for what it is. Her in bed. <laughs> um. 
<laughs> she's gonna like look at the game be like, darn go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She's still holding the cat that's not great. Yeah, Tanya's addressing the cat, like <laughs> it, it don't go anywhere, stay here. <laughs> It opens one like eye and then closes it back. It's just like, can I have one of your little creepy chimera claws, please? It goes back to sleep. Goes back. I'm gonna take that as a yes. <laughs> oh yeah, I think she's gonna just invite Erin in and shut the door behind her. Yeah, and she does walk in and sees uh, Mr. Locke. Currently still frozen. What yeah, does Mr. Locke's bedroom look like? Yeah, I think Tiny's gonna be like, what's yours like? <laughs> um, so, uh, Mr. Locke's uh, childhood bedroom. Um, there's a one of those bunk bed desks in there. Mm -hmm. um, and all across the desk is just rows of um, like books and uh, a massive collection of like little rocks and sticks kind of thing, um, as well as like a, one of those cages that you would usually like go around and like, if you collected bugs, like you'd put your bug in there. Um, up, on, uh, up on the wall, um, there's some horse posters. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> what was a horse girl confirmed? <laughs> um, and um, uh, yeah, like there's m like lots of like sporting equipment um, sort of like leaning um, in the corner of the room um, as well as quite a, num quite a number of like sporting trophies and medals and ribbons and um, for what? All that sort of stuff. What sport? Uh, like athletics. Um, I was wondering if it was horse skill stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there might have been one for it. Um, but yeah, like athletics, um, stuff like karate, um, sort of like, yeah, lots of like fighty things. Um, and then just like a big built-in sliding door closet. Okay, you keep the door open or... <laughs> Tanya yeah. is very much like, trying to get like a good look at what inside of Locke's room looks like. Do are all of their like possessions from that time in the room as well yes. or... Cause all of them? There would be no weapons though. <laughs> <laughs> what, well, what about things like, like hockey sticks and stuff like that? There would be hockey sticks. Very cool. <laughs> all right. Um, Aaron does ask, are you all going to retire for the morning? Uh, I probably should. I haven't slept in, God, two and a bit days now. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure I can see through time. Um, I probably should sleep. I do have like a couple of liters of Red Bull outside though. So if you have something we need to do, I can do. No, <laughs> you're not here. You're not here. <laughs> The voice from the void. Drink <laughs> <laughs> your water and get your sleep. Um, like, unless you have something we need to do. Uh, yeah, I can sleep, I guess. Are you going to sleep? Are you going to sleep? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can just take the sofa here. Cool. It's all right. I'll take the sofa. You take the bed. No, no, no. I, I'm a guest in this uh, room anyway. It's okay. Sofa's comfy. Just give me a blanket or something. I don't want to use random things as blankets. Gives you a sheet of paper. <laughs> the, real, <laughs> the real science and tech role of the season. How do you build the blanket? No, no, you take the bed, I'll take the couch. I can't. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can bunk in with me, look. What do you mean? There's two beds in my room. I'll take the couch. Okay. That's, that's uh, I'll say. Damage. I'll <laughs> say. <laughs> Good night then. And Tanya's just gonna go. <laughs> I mean, if you want, we can share the bed. I'm pretty sure we can fit in your bed. Uh, nah, into you the room. <laughs> nah, that's all right. You sure? Yeah, yeah. No, I've slept in that bed before. There's not enough room for two people. 
Okay. I'll see you tomorrow night. Yeah. See you tomorrow night. You're not gonna disappear on me, are you? <laughs> not. Not. I'm. I'm out here. I'll. I'll be here. Okay. Good night then. Good night. And as Aaron closes the door, um, everyone's settling in to for their morning routine before bed. Some of them are already asleep. So there's not enough room for two people, but there's a room for one person, a 20 meter chimera. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I think it's less about the physical no. aspect of there being room. It's the, it's the intimacy of sharing yeah. a bed that Locke is like, absolutely Fair. not. Understandable. Aaron's just cuddling with the cat then. <laughs> Instead of this cat. <laughs> oh, oh. Crisscross. And the morning passes. It almost seems like time passes by quickly at this place. And for everybody else, you awaken to an alarm clock. Signify, signifies uh, 6 p.m. If your room had clocks, it would ring. For those without clocks, you would hear a ghostly ring from behind the door. I hear, I hear a big red button get pushed and I run out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> for Dr. Yue, I'd like you to roll your rouse check to awaken for this evening. Oh my god. Success. You don't get hungrier. As everyone uh, at least awaken, awakens, most likely Mr. Locke's the first one to awaken. Um, Aaron's after, most likely, early wake up call and stuff. Um, Professor Tristan, I'd imagine, is the next. Dr. Yue is the one after, and the last one is Tanya. Yeah, catching up on some <laughs> <laughs> sleep, sleep debt. <laughs> I can't say if it's a good sleep. It's more like you just close your eyes and you wake up to the next evening. Um, in the time between Mr. Locke waking up and everyone else waking up, um, they probably would have started the day by like calling to get some food brought in for breakfast mm -hmm. or dinner, I guess. Mr. Locke, as you at least um, try to look for a phone, well, through the mirror. There we go, you <laughs> caught that. <laughs> so you call through the mirror, you tap it once, twice, and you see V, V's, seems to be image, show up from the other side of the mirror, and of course takes the order. And V does say that um, food and anything else will be brought shortly. Thank you. And. After V cuts off the call, um, the doorbell rings. And the same ghostly attendant brings, this time not a tray, but a trolley full of food and bags of blood. What's the trolley made of? <laughs> oh my. Plastic. Can we keep this trolley? There's no answer from the attendant. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Tries to bring it into the room. Dangerous <laughs> precedent, we uh, as the attendant leaves, I'd just like to say, like, please be aware that we are four individuals staying within this room and not one unified group. <laughs> <laughs> the attendant does not answer. It just turns around. So, close to I'm going to make my own note. <laughs> <laughs> hit, hit it with the Uno reverse. Uno reversal. Um, is Erin sleeping on the couch or is she awake? Oh, she she was Locke sleeping was in Locke's room. Oh, sorry, yeah, you're Locke right. was on the is couch. She out? Yeah, she's out. Yeah, she's... it was Locke up first, and then Erin, and then, then one of you two, and then Tanya. Um, while the kitchen is there, somewhere to make coffee and tea in the kitchen. I'm assuming so. Yes. I'll say to Aaron, there is no there is no electric way of making. There is the a magical way of doing it. <laughs> there is a um seems to be a pot, but it is made of wood, which is strange, because wood cool. would usually just Burns. burn. Um, Erin, would you like a coffee or a tea? How do, which do you prefer? Uh, no, just water is fine. Okay. I'm going to make Erin a black cup of coffee, uh, and then I'm going to walk over and hand it to her and go, this is your punishment for 
giving away your name tag. My, my... A parent will turn to lock and be like, Kel said a punishment has to be administered for someone doing it. So mm-hmm. uh, this is the punishment that has been deemed fitting for giving away a name tag. Please have one mouthful of coffee and then your punishment is... Served. She does take a gulp of coffee and makes a face. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. Yeah. Just one gulp is fine, right? And then yeah. as that's happening, Mr. Locke will get Aaron a glass of water and bring that over. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it just does it all. It was, better, it was better than what I think could have been an alternative. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dr. Yo would actually like to activate ghost side as the first thing she does. She does not get hungrier. Mm. And um, since this penthouse is significantly smaller than the outside world, I'd like to see what the Chimera is doing. The Chimera, it seems to just be, you know, like the cat itself for everyone else. It's just lounging on the sofa. However, the Chimera itself seems to have sh- shrunk. Uh. However, oh, sorry. However, it shrank. However, it is dominating 90% of this living room. Uh. Yeah, we're all walking through it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can we're clipping through the camera. We're clipping through yeah, the camera. Yeah, that's exactly. Can we like can you interact with it at all at the size that it's at or if you try and interact with it do you just pass through it? I would like to put out my hand for it to sniff. For the three lion heads to sniff. It snubs you. It snubs me. Is it okay if I pet you? I say to Chester. You see this, are you talking to the cat or it's actual? Like the actual chimera. So to everyone else, I'm probably just talking to the couch. Being like looking up <laughs> at the cat. <laughs> Excuse me, may I pet you? <laughs> the chimera itself uh, physically tries to, it seems to be um, trying to stand up uh, before moving positions and turning its back on you. Turning its back on me, okay. Very I take rude. that as a no. Does the cat turn around and say? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd like to walk up to Chester and just give a bow. To the say, cat? <laughs> yeah. Say, uh, hello, Mr. Chester. Uh, Mr. Kell mentioned about the possibility of acquiring one of your quills uh, to assist in the work here. Uh, but, of course, I wanted to discuss this with you, not take it. Is this something you would be willing to offer, please? Erin is actually like staring at all of you as if you're crazy. Because like, <laughs> this is the weirdest thing, Erin. <laughs> well, yeah. technically, it's like one is just looking into the air, talking to the air. One is talking to the cat that she's been carrying There's for. There's something in the in the food we had. There's something but, really weird in that coffee. Um, but the cat uh, does turn around. It seems to be stretching, mirroring the big uh, chimera itself. Uh, stretches and sits down and looks up at you before saying meow thank you I appreciate that I'll uh, sit down and be like maybe I'll wait for V to bring one of the quills this could be some very elaborate joke (laughs) I still want one of its claws or like something that we could like tip in like the poison from the scorpion tail That'd be dope as hell. Yeah, be cool. I don't know if I'd, I mean, if you can achieve it, I, if anyone can, it's you. I just like, I don't want to make, I just like look at the cat like, if we made any progress here at all with the claw thing, does the cat do anything or am I just like, is it just looking at me? Yeah, the cat is looking at you before, you know, um, start to lick its paw and then going towards Erin and starts pawing at her. Erin, could you maybe ask Chester these questions, or Cat, as you call it, these questions? Oh, See if it is, works. That his, is that his name? Yeah. Oh, Chester. Still Doesn't seem like a out. Chester. I thought Chester would be more, like, scary. Oh, no, Black trust cat. me, that's definitely a Chester. I don't know. How can you say it's a Chester? Look at me. It's so cute. And I just stare up into the air. Apparently it speaks English. You could just ask it. It's... <laughs> what do you want me to ask? Ask it. We can start with, that's probably a good one. Is What is your name? Uh, 
I don't think a cat can answer. Your cat isn't a cat. Your cat, this is an illusion. It's actually giant, got three heads. It's a fey thing that you can't see because you're a normal person. We need to move past that. Part. You're not fucking with us, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a. It's, so that's hilarious. That's why. That's like why the people who you were trying to hug the cat were so freaked out. It was because to them it's ginormous. Yeah, you can't see it. Can you see it? No, but UA can because UA is like gifted or whatever. You can't see it, but I would okay. actually like to just poke <laughs> the chimera very gently. Okay, before that, I'd like it to roll charisma and persuasion. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, oh no. I like to poke the chimera. Like just uh, gently. One. Touch. Since it has its back to me, right? Just very gently touch. As you try to gently touch the chimera, uh, you can feel it is warm as you touch it. Ooh. And it, you know, raises its big, one of its big heads. Mm. And small makes head? a face at you, okay. and, but as you touch it, you hear what seems to be this gentleman voice that says, "Please do not touch me." I'm so sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> One. We just, gave, we just gave that. I'm so sorry, sir. Go, okay, Chester is off limits. <laughs> um. But if I can touch it, the, uh, the, do the others like just? Clip through it. Yeah. Oh. It's probably an awareness thing. Like, we okay. need to be aware of. I'm saying this again. Like, if you think there is a spoon, then there is a spoon. Yeah, exactly like right. Like, uh, which, like, to be honest, there probably is buttons in the elevator. Yeah. We just don't think there's buttons in the elevator, okay. so we don't see them. Um, well, it is an excellent morning. I hope everyone rested well. What very strange bedrooms there were. Yeah, um, well, the next event is going to be starting, so I might be going ahead soon. Mm. Did you give back her name tag? Yeah. Ah, cool. Yeah. Beautiful. So Excellent. Well, that's Mr. Awesome. Mr. Chimera Dude, uh, if you were going to give anything, just wanted to let you know it is to try and protect Eren, who I think you care about. I'm not just, like, doing that for the shits and giggles. Um, but no pressure. Oh. You see the cat... Um, start pawing at Erin, but this time it's like you can see one claw just <laughs> out of its like paw, and Erin's like giving like oh oh it was to give you like, uh, a sorry it's like it's the cat it's the cat not the <laughs> yeah. chimera is that anything with the chimera the chimera is mirroring the thing however it is terrifying <laughs> the big <laughs> bloodily pulls out but this time it's like not the paw but it is like the talon of yeah. the eagle good lord I hold out my hands and you see the see it's the same same thing the cat's doing and the chimera's doing which is to bite its own claw and just like and spit it towards you. Okay. It was a tiny thing. <laughs> and as the chimera spits the thing towards you, it disappears. But Tanya does get the... The little tiny one. Tiny one. Cat claw. That's pretty cool. Thank but you. But do, do I see this? So, I see so this? it's... But it's gone from being the eagle talon to just a normal little yeah, cat claw. Little so cat. it's... I don't actually have, like, the talon thing. Mm -hmm. Was worth a try. Like, can can I go over and inspect the claw? Yeah, intelligence in the pot. For the record, Mr. Locke absolutely adores this cat now. <laughs> yeah, we're just collecting fun NPCs. We've got, Juan, <laughs> we've got Chester. I love one. Soon we're going to have Winters. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, four successes. With four successes, uh, Dr. Yue, you would know that even though it is tiny, that it is going to be, uh, it has the same effect as having the actual cool. talon. Okay. It, it has the same effect, Tanya. Okay, so Tanya's gonna like... So if you can stick this or like glue this to like the end of like a, like a stick or something? So Tanya's gonna go to the trolley and like... <laughs> Try and like smash the like to grab like the handrail of the trolley. 
Are you gonna smash it with the claw? <laughs> no, like with her like booted, booted foot kind of thing. Like strength and brawl, please. <laughs> Can someone uh, lock break this trolley for me? <laughs> All right, Mr. Lock goes over to the trolley. Well, is if I, I'm not gonna be part of destruction of property, <laughs> so Aaron just grabs Chester. And otherwise, like otherwise, we can stick it to the end of your hockey stick. I mean that works, but 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 but. If it's on something smaller, it'll be easier to conceal, so. Actually, what about the wooden kettle? The wooden pot? Yeah. What about your name tag? I'm not Cold a... Iron Claw. Cold Iron Claw. <laughs> I don't hate that. Yeah, could stick it to my name tag. I mean. There's a pin on the back of that name tag, isn't mm -hmm. there? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna, may I like, be like, look, can I give me your name tag? I can't give you my name tag. Well, yeah. come and stand over here with your name tag. <laughs> <laughs> and Tanya's gonna stick this claw to Locke's name tag. Ooh, as you stick the claw on the name tag, it starts to sizzle. Oh, oh never mind. <laughs> no. Break this trolley for me, please, Locke. <laughs> <laughs> To spend some willpower. For your <laughs> would, you, would you like me to give it a shot? Nah. <laughs> oh, two successes. I'm happy to walk over and give it a shot. <laughs> yeah. Aaron will most likely. Which made it worse. <laughs> uh, if there's anything else, I'm running a bit late. I have to prepare for the game. What game are you running? Oh, uh, the Hatter. The Hatter's Tea Party. What does that mean? It, it's just a tea party. Four successes for the trolley. As, as Aaron says, it's just a tea party here, a crack. Yeah, and Tristan's just gonna walk over and spit I think Tiny's gonna take it and like, if there's a hockey stick in the thing, I'm sure there'll be like tape on that, ho like repurposed tape from the hockey stick to like glue this cat claw onto this like piece of plastic and give it to lock. As I unbreak the trolley, I say this is uh, a piece of equipment that's not supposed to be within people's rooms, uh, as such I am disassembling it so it is not available for future use. Oh. Juan, write that down. <laughs> and Juan just starts scribbling. You can see like a, Thank you, like a piece, like a small notebook and it starts like scribbling with the tiny blob hands. However, you see the tiny child just start <laughs> to scribble. I'm a bit stressed out. Oh, Juan. Oh, you never be okay. distressed. It's fine. It's, we're, just, we're doing the work, Juan. You're doing phenomenal. Okay. Um, um, Aaron does say it, it's a tea party. That's what uh, was What called. do you have to do? Is this like a hug the cat? sort of situation. Yeah, I just need to run it to its completion and ensure that I don't die is what Mr. Kell told me. Don't give your name tag to anyone else. Like show them when you are asked because you're contractually obligated to do so, but otherwise do not part with it. Do not willing uh, do not willingly hand it over to someone. Uh, okay. Make sure it's on your person in direct contact with you at all times. We were told we shouldn't drink anything that wasn't in our rooms. So where is this tea that you're- It's in the big tent. Uh, anything that happens there is not gonna be uh, in a way a deal. It, it, Cause you pay for it. Makes Your sense. payment, at least the entry payment is uh, the 15 experience. Um, and in a way, that is your payment. So even if you drink it, you're not going to be stuck here because you already paid your way. Are we, uh, as part of the security review, which we have already, is our task is the performance, or is the, the payment for what we are doing with the request, are we able to accompany you into the big tent just to observe? Unfortunately not, because game leaders are the only ones allowed in the tent at this moment. Uh, I think in about five minutes, it should open to the public. I suggest that you get in there early mm. because it does fill up fast. Sure. Okay. Should we go? Yes, let's go. Yeah. We, uh, we're required to go in there. It's part of, if it's the main event, then it, it's the review, it needs to be reviewed. Yeah, We'd and be not performing our task to not do it. Erin would say goodbye and leave because she's late, most likely running and. That's fair. Um, just with the name tag, I just want to grab my name tag mm -hmm. and just hold it in my hand. 
like not there's it doesn't hurt to hold the name tag or anything like that. Doesn't hurt. Good. Did she take Chester with her? Hmm? Did she take Chester? I yes. think Tyson's like, thank you, bye. Before <laughs> you, go, you know, just like appreciated the cat. <laughs> Let's uh look out for her. Head to the big tent then. Mm-hmm. We'll start there. Right. Um, as everyone is going to be leaving, uh, or at least preparing to head to the big tent, uh, you would get a call from the mirror, but it's more likely tapping from the mirror. Hello? I think Tanya's gonna rush over to the mirror, yeah. It's gonna be, uh, V, and she says, um, uh, there is a message for Miss Hurt from Haley. Yep. Uh, she said she will meet you at the event if. <sighs> That's gonna be. If you are heading to the big tent for the event, please bring your cloaks. Our what? Cloaks. Unless it is. Um, unless you would like for your uh, identity to be known, I would suggest to bring a cloak. If you do not have one, please check your wardrobes. There should be one that is to your taste because all the clothes there is fitted to your taste. If none of it is to your taste, please check the closet near the door, near to the hallway door, and there should be simple black cloaks. This is the cult stuff I was worried about. <laughs> I mean, if, the, if she's joined a cult, then blending in might be more beneficial for us. Mm. To the cloaks! As all four of you head towards the big tent, you see that there is a congregation of people also wearing black cloaks. Um, lining up and as you approach the entrance to the big tent there seems to be a seven foot tall man standing like a bouncer and there is uh, the red satin um, rope on the door does he just look like a human or is there something like a blue skin for for Mr. Locke he just seems like a really tall (laughs) man for everyone else, he looks green. His skin is green, and there is horns on his head. Hmm. Um, are we are we first in line? Seeing as we've left earlier, um, they've already like let people in, oh, and you are already um, name tags out. Everyone, I guess, for stuff. We don't have to be wearing it. We just have to show it. No, no, but I don't, well, I don't want to pay to get in. Do you want to pay okay. to get in? All right, okay. I hold it. Ideally. So I'll walk with the name tag to say hello, uh, sir. We're here performing the security review as mandated by Mr. Kell. Fifteen uh, XP for entrance. How much? Fifteen. Unless you want to be stuck here forever, I would feel free. <laughs> yeah, true. That's a good point. I guess maybe we should pay because then that's what protects us from constituting an agreement. Mm, that is true. All right. Um, the experience. Like, Tristan will pay the experience, but he, it will be... Well, he'll give the, one of the memories as well of his childhood that he had. He was, I don't need your memory. Oh, well, it's my experience. <laughs> I don't need your attitude, but here we both are. <laughs> so you're going to open the gates or not? He grunts, and you can mark off a uh, 15 experience. Anybody else? I pay. Mr. Vok pays. Yeah, Tanya pays. All right, everyone mark up 15 experience. He does say you will get it back once you're done, unless you don't want it, then. It's just insurance. You don't end up here forever. Beautiful. Sorry, I I can make sure for the review. What was your name? Grunt. Your name is Grunt? Yes. You all got a problem with my name? Grunt. Got a problem with your attitude. Does he have? Does it say grunt there? Yeah. Uh, no. Should Should I have a problem with your name? You seem very unhappy in your work, Grunt. I do not want to be here. Ah, uh, well. Fair enough. You know what? Maybe just positive attitude. Chuck a smile on that big horned face, and we'll get through this together. Perfect. <laughs> you see him reveal her rows of teeth. Perfect. Uh, face for radio, Grunt. 
and walk in. As you all walk in, there seems to be a lot of people all wearing differing black cloaks. Um, every everyone is trying to push towards the 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 um, front of the seems to be the arena. And during this whole scenario, everyone's pushing and pulling. Um, there is a light that comes on. And you see a familiar face to you. You see Candy. Candy Red. She is wearing a... She seems to be this six, seven foot tall lady that's wearing a ringleader's red outfit. Uh, her red hair is all braided down to hold the floor. And she's wearing the ringleader's hat and she says, Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to Coma. This signifies the start of our second day event. Of course, we did mix it a little bit. And so, maybe you will be with your companion or maybe not after this. But, I will introduce the game leaders. And she... You know, like the, the light turns on and she gestures to her left and you see Ghost. And you see Kel right beside Aaron who's holding Chester. And Kel removes his hat, his green top hat, and puts it on top of Aaron's head. Before he says to the audience, unfortunately, I will not be joining for this event. I hope you all have a good evening. And I hope you get some good luck and gain a lot of experience. And as everyone claps, you see Aaron look towards Ghost. And you see Ghost stare straight at you, Mr. Locke. And then he smiles. And that is where we're gonna end this session for this evening <sighs> thank you guys once again for joining us my name is Rina and I have been the storyteller for this evening I'm MK and I've been playing Tanya Pert uh, I'm Joel and I am the professor here I don't have any other names <laughs> I am Evie and I have been playing Lulu the equation <laughs> consultant <laughs> I am Kat and I've been playing Mr. Luck or Cassandra and with that, I hope to see you again next week for the Bahari's point of view. Bye!